Go to 69 of your Quran, 44 to 47. Had the messenger made up something in our name, we would have certainly seized him by his right hand and severed his aorta. Then, then what would it say, aorta? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Yeah, um, it says, we would have certainly seized him by his right hand and severed his aorta. Wrong. And none of you could have shielded him from us. If Muhammad had made a lie, Allah would have cut off his aorta, right? Which is metaphorical means cause him to die a painful death, right? That's right. Now, according to your hadith, how did Muhammad die and what did he say? He died from old age. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. According to your hadiths, and I'm going to give them to you, Muhammad died from the effects of poison. When the Jewish woman fed him a poisoned piece of land, he had enough of it for the poison to linger in his body. And as he was dying, he says, Aisha, I feel my aorta being cut off from the poison of the lamb that the Jewish woman fed me. So according to the hadith, your prophet died the death of someone damned to hell. Read it. So the prophet... Uh, peace be upon him in his ailment in which he died used to say oh aisha i still feel the pain caused by the food i ate at uh, tiber and at this time i feel as if why'd you stop has, is, wait 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 why'd sorry. you stop read. sorry i just uh, yeah you got shocked yeah. read it again i feel what i feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison so why did you tell me he died of old age when your hadith says he died a miserable shameful humiliating death the death of an accursed dog because your quran said if he was a liar Allah would cut off his aorta, and according to your prophet, that's what happened to him. And you were stupid enough to follow this man and give up the real Jesus and the real Word of God, the Bible. I feel sorry for you, man. Let me let me do you a favor. We've talked enough. Lord willing, if you want to come back tomorrow and we talk about who Jesus claimed to be, we can talk about that. So if you're interested, we'll talk about who Jesus claimed to be. Because enough about Muhammad, this wicked tool of the devil who deceived you. May Jesus save you, who loved you enough to die for you, not deceive you into following a pervert. And if you want, call me tomorrow, and we're going to just talk about who Jesus claimed to be, nothing else. If you're interested, contact me. Okay, sure. So when are you going to come back home to Jesus, the one who loves you, and stop this nonsense about Islam? I don't know. Let me read to you what Jesus tells you to do. Go to John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Uh, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. I hear almost like you're about to cry. Yeah. Good, because Jesus is speaking to your heart. See what he said to you, young man? He goes, I go to prepare a place for you. And you know the way to where I'm going. And I promise you, I'll come back to you and take you to myself. And then I want you to read five and six. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except me. Hallelujah. If you now what he's telling you is, you don't need to guess what the way is. I am the way, son, to bring you home to your Father. I am the one who's preparing a mansion with your name on it. I am the one who will take you to be with me. And where I am, you will be, and I dwell in the presence of my Father, and you will be there with my Father. He's telling you, come home. You've been too far away from me. You've been lost in this world. Satan has tried to deceive you, but I'm greater than Satan and I love you more than you can imagine. And I have a home with your name written that I purchased by my blood. And I love you, son. Come home. Come home to your father. I want you to read John 14 verses 18 to 19. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Did you see his promise? He's saying to you, not just to his disciples, he's saying to you, son, I will not leave you an orphan. I won't leave you alone. I promise I'll come to you. And on that day, you will know that I live. And because I live, you will live also. And since Jesus can never die, he is swearing and promising you, if you come home to me, you'll never die because I'm in love with you. And this is why you're here. You're not here because of Sam Shamoon. You're not here to debate. You're here because the Holy Spirit has been searching for you. And the Holy Spirit is saying, enough running, son. Come to Jesus so he can take you to the Father. Because the Father aches for you and desires to have you in his bosom. So I want you to read now John 17, 23 to 24. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought up to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to, give, to, uh, given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world now i want you to see what jesus just said to the father i want you to see in 23 jesus says anyone who believes the message of the apostles they will then be in me and i in them 
and the Father in me. And then he says, through their perfect union with you and me, Father, the world will know that you love them even as you love me. You see that in 23? Yes. Okay, you know what that means, James? It means if you're in Jesus Christ, you know how much the Father loves you? He loves you just as much as he loves Jesus because that's what Jesus wants. Father, I want James, when he comes to believe in me and he comes to trust in me, I want James to know you love and adore him as much as you love and adore me. And because of that, you love him as just as much as you love me. He'll be with me where I am. And where I am, I'm in your presence, Father. So James will be here with you and me in your presence forever. Muhammad and his God cannot give you that, but Jesus can. Go to Matthew 11, brother. Read 27. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Now, I want you to see what Jesus says. He says, look, I'm the only one who knows my Father intimately, perfectly, and completely, just like the Father knows me intimately, perfectly, and completely, and I'm the only one qualified to reveal him. So now notice what he says, because I, the Son alone know the father perfectly completely intimately the same way he knows me you need to come to me the son to know who god is you can't go to someone else so then i notice what he says to you in 28 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest can i ask you a question are you tired of life and burden yes you hear what jesus said he's saying james come to me you're tired son You've been broken down, beaten down. You've been lost in a world where Satan wants to devour you. You've experienced heartache and misery. But son, I'm telling you, come to me and I swear I will give you rest. Now read 29 and 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Did you hear that promise, James? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> He's saying to you, James, I won't burden you. I won't crush you. I won't humiliate you. I won't reject you. I won't make you feel worthless. I promise you, James, I'll walk with you and I will carry your burdens with you because I'm gentle and humble and I'm full of love for you. But will you come to me? Mama can't promise you that. Allah can't promise you that. But Jesus says, I can. I'm going to give you a few more verses and then we'll wrap it up because I want you to now just focus and cry out to Jesus. You cried out to Allah, you need to cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, if you are really who the Bible says you are, and you're alive if this was a meeting you orchestrated where i'd run into this guy sam because you were going to use him to bring me to you please i'm tired i'm lonely i'm miserable and i'm lost all i want to know is if there's a god who loves me and that this god will save me if you're that god please talk to me i'm willing to accept you for who you are i'm willing to do all that you say if you really are who the bible says you are please jesus the Bible says, though my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will take me to himself. If you're that Lord, then please receive me because I'm tired, son of God. I can't do this anymore. And he will hear your cry. Now, I told you to go to that passage. Do you remember what passage it was? Yeah, it's uh, Luke 19, 10. Read it for me. Okay. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. See, Jesus, the Son of Man, came looking for you because you're lost in this world of darkness where Satan's trying to deceive you. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. You can be lost in the darkness, but I'm coming with my light to shine upon your path to show you the way. And the way is here, son. Here I am, son. I am the way and the truth and the life. Son, you don't need to be lost anymore. Come to me so I can give you rest. Now, the final passage for you, Romans 10, verses 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So here is the promise of Jesus. James, if in your heart you have no doubt that I died and I was raised to life, never to die again, and I will return, and you're willing to believe that from your heart and confess verbally, because that's to be verbal with your mouth in front of witnesses. I will preserve you, and I will love you, and I will save you with an everlasting love. Do you want to go home, James? Yes, I do. Do you want to come back to Jesus and say, Lord, the prodigal yes. son has returned? Yes, I do. So then, James, I want you to say from your heart, from your heart, in front of witnesses, and we will be your witnesses before Jesus. I want you to say, Jesus, you are Lord, and my life is yours. I've come home. Jesus, you are my Lord. And my life is yours and I've come home. Hallelujah. You're going to make me cry, man. So what I want you to do now, when you get off this session, I want you to get on your knees and just talk to Jesus.